Hi there. I'm Jill Riley from The Currents Morning Show. I keep you company your weekday mornings from 5 to 10. And when I'm not keeping you company in the morning, I'm really, really honored to be part of The Currents Virtual Sessions. And so I just want to start by saying welcome to you and a huge thank you for being a member and for supporting Minnesota Public Radio and supporting The Current because really, you make these virtual sessions happen. You make it all happen here at The Current. So I just wanted to say that, especially since December is our month of gratitude. So welcome. This is a really special thing. I'm so glad that you're able to kind of see how the magic happens with the recording of a virtual session. And this is the way of the world right now. And ever since the live music industry kind of came to a stop, with the global pandemic, you know, we had to figure out a way here at The Current to keep bringing you connections to your favorite artists. And the virtual sessions, we've watched them evolve and grow over the past, I was going to say a few months, but we know that it's been more than that. And we know it feels like more than that. Uh, but what a great time to connect with so many musicians that are kind of sitting on new music and getting ready to release albums. And I think the year 2021 is going to be such a great time for new music. We're really looking forward to it. So thank you so much for joining this virtual session today. Again, thank you so much for your support of The Current. And I want to get you involved a little bit in the process here. Um, there's a Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. And you are welcome. If you have any questions for the artist today, We'd love to hear them, and uh, producer Jesse will make sure she passes on your message to me so we can uh, spend a little time getting some of your questions in as well. Uh, so I am very excited for this one. I've just loved playing her music. Um, songs like Lottery, Uh-Huh, I Get No Joy, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Jade Bird put out an EP in 2017 called Something American, and that was followed by her self-titled debut full length in spring of 2019. And she's got a couple new songs, and she's going to share them today during this virtual session. But like I said, so much great music is going to be coming in the year 2021, and Jade Bird is no exception to that. So I know that I can't hear the applause in this studio room right now, but I know you're feeling it behind your computer right now or your tablet or however you're joining us today. But wherever you are, even if people are watching you, let's just give a huge round of applause for Jade Bird. Hi. Hello. How are you? Not bad. Thank you so much for joining us. And, you know, I was kind of reviewing so many of the events that you've done with The Current. Um, you joined us at South by Southwest, uh, the James J. Hill House here in St. Paul for a micro show. Um, you know, we've just had this great opportunity to uh, to do so many um, you know shows with you and to have an opportunity to connect you to to your fans here in the Twin Cities, which you have a lot of them. So thank you so much for joining me, uh, Jade Bird. Who is with you right now? Can you introduce? I'm Luke. I I'm Hi, the Luke. Yeah. Um, project. Hi. Excellent. Nice to meet you, Luke. Uh, again, thanks for Thank doing this too. today. Um, it's going to be great to hear some of these new songs. I'm just so excited for you um, to, to, you know, you've been able to continue to be creative during this time. You know, there are the disappointments where you can't tour, but also um, so glad that like new music is coming out of this time. Um, so Jade, where are you right now? Uh, we're in Austin, Texas. Uh, we moved like three weeks ago. We were actually in Nashville. We flew straight into Nashville before mm. that to to kind of. Oh, we were. Oh, yeah. We were doing. Oh, well, we were doing. <laughs> we were trying to do a live session where we recorded the record in RCA, but you know, for various reasons, that had to be rescheduled. Mm. Um, which is just like a product of everything right now, the way it is, you know. So yeah, but we're settled. We told you we were doing some uh, furniture building, living <laughs> living the dream. <laughs> The new dream. Uh, why did you <clears throat> land on Austin, Texas? I think I personally really wanted somewhere quite grounded. Um, you know, we we were kind of we we're looking at Oregon area, and then our friends actually who lived in Austin um, were renewing their lease. My, you know, one of my best friends, Austin Rower, he shoots like all the video or photos. Anybody, you know, if you're associated to me, shoots them all. So yeah, he was renewing his lease with his girlfriend, and we were just like, oh, this 
it was the only way we could have really done it in yeah. hindsight but because because we couldn't they wouldn't have accepted someone coming from the uk at that time barely knew if we were going to get visas so sure it's lucky we did but i'm just so glad we we, we kind of dreamt of doing that on tour you know we wanted a little creative hub so it's it's mad it's happening now well, here you are. And by the power of technology, mm-hmm. thankfully, we're still able to connect with, um, you know, the artists that we play on The Current. Um, so, Jade, I thought we could get into the first song that you're going to play and then we'll spend some more time talking. Um, okay. But, you know, you talked about you kind of mentioned being in Nashville and uh, mm-hmm. wanting to, like, track the album. Well, um, I-, I do know that you were able to record some music and that you were able to work with Dave Cobb. Yeah. Yeah, we finished the finished the whole album. Um, it's just a case of I don't really, I don't know if I want to play out the full length until there's some prospect of playing live. Just because I've always felt, you know, it's like that current session. Like people, there's such a connection when I play it live, and I can really make you know friends and fans for life doing it that way. And so it makes sense to sort of put some pieces out before the whole record so the next year will be a few pieces and then hopefully in the autumn the full thing so all right yeah, well it's all done yeah let's uh we'll, we'll talk more about uh your time in nashville and working with uh, really like nashville mm-hmm. super producer dave cobb let's talk a little more <laughs> on the other side of this song but this is a new one and it's called head start <laughs> Different than I usually do. They say that I've even given special treatment. I deny, but I can't. What you don't seem to understand is I won't just take your hand. I've left signs, but you take no notice. This is kind of rare for me. Everyone knows that it's true. You're the only one in the room, but you don't see me, do you? Must be blind, I'm not too. That's alright, I'll keep on putting myself on the Excellent. Sounds great. Uh, it's a new song Thank called you. Head Start. Uh, it's a, a virtual session from The Current with Jade Bird. Again, welcome to all the members of Minnesota Public Radio who are joining us today for the session. Thank you so much for your support. Um, so Jade, new song called Head Start. You want to talk about making that song? Um, you were in Nashville. Can you just kind of talk about the process? Yeah, so I ended up writing it in sort of upstate New York area. Um, I kind of returned there to get some inspiration back after kind of touring flat out for, I mean, kind of two years, but the long process, four years. So, yeah, I kind of returned there. And I remember in my notebook, I looked the other day and there was just like the word head start. It was the first thing I wrote in my notebook. So I was like, I felt like it was a bit of a mantra or thing into the new music. So that's why I think I put it out first, because I was like, it, it makes a lot of sense when you know my catalogue. 
Um, whereas a lot of the new stuff is a bit more experimental. But as far as the recording process goes, Dave gets you all an RCA in a room and you play the song once or twice. And as the musicians just pick it up like that, as you do, you know, they literally just in straight away. And we do it no more than two or three times. And then we kind of have, have the record. Yeah. This particular one was done in the sort of tester basement session. We did like three songs in the basement um, of Dave's house, which isn't like probably my basement or anyone else. All right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. pretty bold our basement. But, um, and then the rest of the record we did obviously in the studio. So, yeah. Uh, so for, for anyone joining us today for, for just so the sake of members and, and for people watching this video, uh, Dave Cobb is just an incredible, incredible producer in Nashville. And he has worked with Sturgill Simpson and Jason Isbell and Brandy Carlisle. And, um, you know, he, he seems to be that kind of go-to guy for a lot of singer songwriters and those in, you know, sort of that Americana genre um how did you get connected to dave cobb um i think to oh his cousin brent cobb i'd done a lot like a lot of work with um in the uk specifically i met brent in the uk and we were writing for that movie the star is born which dave was doing the soundtrack of um and then we finished feet off the ground which was the song that came out it didn't make the cut of the film but we just kind of loved it anyway so we went into rca for the first time i was a lot younger so i was a bit like oh my god <laughs> um and yeah we recorded it together and i think then i was on dave's radar and i his you know what i mean but a couple of years later we were just wandering and shopping around who would be good for this record and i mean I'd sort of given up on the dream of doing a live record, if that makes sense, making it sound live or banned in a room. A lot of people can't pull that off. Um, and just as I was giving up on that, Dave kind of just does it without me even asking or knowing. He just put us all there and recorded it. So he's definitely a one of a kind, I'd, I'd say that. Did sure. he bring in the players? I mean, did he bring in the session players? Um, or, or did you bring in some of your, you know, some of your own people? Well, I brought Luke. <laughs> it was just us two. It was yeah, literally yeah. just us and then and then three or four other musicians, which were okay. all, I mean, they blew our minds. Those guys work so quickly and, and so efficiently. It was, it was like, I think Brandy Carlisle's drama, who I, yeah. I absolutely adore, Chris. Um, yeah. He's just the funniest. He Does he ever really wear sleeves? Sort of... I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he was so, like, I thought he was going to be so Texas, but he's actually grew up in LA, yeah. and he and he told us this story about um like playing. His, his brother and him used to take a few uh, psychedelics, if you know what I mean, when they were very very young. And his brother used to set him up a candle, and he'd play to the flame, <laughs> <laughs> just kind of off off his head. And I just thought, it just summed up what yeah. kind of drama Chris was, just yeah. incredible. I guess That's exactly what we needed as well. For anyone who has ever done a psychedelic, they know exactly what you're talking about. I personally wouldn't know, right? So, um, well, that's incredible, you know, and, and getting into the, a Nashville studio with, you know, some of those session players, it's such an old school way of doing things. And um, I just wonder when you were at RCA Studios, and I know you were in Studio A, um, which is right next door to Studio B, which, I mean, that place has really kind of become a museum. Um, but what mm -hmm. did it feel like to just be in that studio and that space, um, you know, almost, does it, yeah. does it feel like it's kind of, I don't know how to put it, but maybe in a good way, ha like haunted by its past. Like, yeah. can you, could you kind of you're, feel you're, the you're, energy? You're playing with the ghosts of legends, you know, you're sort of in there and you, you feel why people love that studio, but also it's like great people it doesn't make you feel intimidated when you meet like iconic people the best ones I find don't make you feel you know like uncomfortable and I think that studio really speaks like that you feel at home mm -hmm. and it's a really big space and warm lighting and there's like you know Dave puts a couch in the middle right in, dead in the middle by the control bit um so at the same time as feeling daunting and you know we're quite young to be in a place like that I think at the same time I was just like it just felt nice yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we we love them. What uh, what what are your what was your impression of Nashville when you went there for the first time? Nashville's interesting. I think especially coming well the first time, I kind of loved it. Um, you know, it's 
it's quite spread out so you have to drive everywhere that was my only you know it's a bit of a shock to us uk lot because you know if you go to manchester everything's kind of there um i kind of love the culture there i love like the music culture um and i think the sort of more liberal kind of i don't know thing is coming into nashville you know what i mean it's not mm-hmm. quite as conservative as it was um which appeals to me i just kind of like austin because it feels like the ultra liberal uh, mm. nashville you know what i mean it feels like nashville gone crazy which i mm-hmm. really yeah. personally <laughs> is for me i feel like that's me so <laughs> nashville gone crazy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well it kind of has in the couple of past couple of years but <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, cause the first time I went to Nashville was over a decade ago and that city has changed so much. I mean, the growth and the population and, and kind of, um, you know, some of the more maybe Austin, Texas vibes kind of entering Nashville, mm-hmm. which has been nice to see that kind of change. Um, but, but, you know, in Austin, you know, definitely if you're going to be like kind of fly your freak flag, that's a, it's a great place to be, yeah. you know? I kind of love that though, you know, I feel like really you know, true art or true artists, like it, it, that is the kind of thing I think you need to be in, especially when you're like 23 as I am. That's why we were looking at Portland, Oregon mm-hmm. um, initially, because that city to me is, is so, everyone's so unique in that way and can just be themselves. And I just, I really enjoy a place that is open like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's definitely what we were looking for, I think, when we came out because that's Mm. what I love about America is you you sort of have this mentality that you can be yourself a lot of the time um, in certain places. So yeah, that's probably why I moved, I think. Yeah. And so many different cities have so many great identities. Uh, Don't forget to put Minneapolis on your list someday if you ever feel like moving (laughs) to where it's freezing cold a few months of the year. But (laughs) but you've been here, you know, um, yeah. Like the current, by the way, is like one of my favorite like radios ever i'd say i don't say that lightly as well like i we adore it but also just minneapolis as a whole when we um played there last that was one of the most electric shows because we were leaving each other for a while when we left you remember outside said pools we were leaving oh that was a long time ago that was when i left the tour for a minute to go back home and we were really sad i was talking about the last venue where so our drummer is this 50 year old kind of slightly crazy guy who used to play with jeff buckley um And the, the venue that we played at, um, First Avenue, he was he was saying, oh, yeah, the last time I was here was with Jeff. Oh, wow. And so it was this kind of magical evening. And, yeah, the crowd were – that was one of the highlights of that last tour for I me, for sure. I forgot about that show. I remember yeah. sitting when the crowd left. Oh, that was the I one, just wasn't sat it? on the stage, and I was just like, the energy in that room, I just – I've never done that before. I just sort of sat there and just sat in the empty room and was just like, wow, that was yeah. really something, like – just a beautiful, beautiful like moment and night. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, First Avenue is really. It's just such an incredible place, and really the the community of music fans in this town, in the Twin Cities, and in Minnesota. They, I think there's something really special about that, where people are so hungry for the live music experience. And we'll get back there. You know, we'll get back there someday. Yeah, but I totally I, agree. I think it's yeah. unrivaled. Yeah, I so really I, it's did. just there. There's something about the fan scene around here that I think is again really special. And I'm, I, I've as long as I've lived here, um, you know, First Avenue has been one of those places that I, I just love going. Well, Jade, um, yeah. I think we should get another song. Uh, Jade Bird yeah. joining us for a current virtual session. Um, so I know you're gonna play a couple songs in a row here. One of them being new, and then I think one of them maybe is a cover. Yeah. Okay. Should we, do you want me to announce it now or should we surprise you? I think we should surprise. Let's surprise. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, this first one there is called Houdini. It's a quarter to three and it's clear, clear to me that you're leaving. Usually we don't come, come to blows till the evening. Now the neighbors are out on the street Trying to hear what we're screaming About Oh, if they need a one to Reason or an explanation If they 
let you go without giving a reason. Oh, you start the wall, slam the door, throw it all in my face. So I don't want you to stay if they need a one And trade your place with anyone who's not walking away again. I blame each escapade on my mistakes for not letting all this in. That's Houdini. This next <laughs> one um, is one we actually used to play on tour a whole bunch. Like it was a sort of, I don't know, it's become like a bit of a fond memory. Uh, but it's a cover of a cover. It's a cover of Radiohead initially. It's called Black Star, and then Gillian Welch and Dave Rollins did it, and I was obsessed. So. <clears throat> <clears throat> Over, I keep pressing out when I 
Excellent, excellent. Uh, Radiohead cover right there. Black Star. Is that from the record, The Bends? Yeah. I'm thinking, yeah. Uh, (laughs) Excellent. Um, And you mentioned that uh, in between songs there, when when you were setting that up, um, that you had heard the Gillian Welch, Dave Rollins song, uh, version of it, rather. Was that your introduction to that song, or had you heard the Radiohead version first? So the weird thing is I've heard the Radiohead version first, but like I hadn't heard the words. I think it's something to do with Tom York when he's younger. I think he, you know, I think I've heard him say in an interview, he was a bit embarrassed about, you know, being so revealing in the lyrics. And then when I listened to the Gillian Welsh version, I was like, these lyrics are incredible. You know, they're so moving and I could really just hear all of them. So I think that's what really kind of attached my heart to that song. Mm. Um, but I had probably heard the original off the bends because yeah. I'd listened to that record. So, yeah, it was a, it was a weird discovery, I think. Well, I'm, I'm so glad you did it. And the first Avenue on that tour. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just a... They played First Avenue on that tour. Luke's a big radio ed fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I have um, some friends in town that were at that show. <laughs> and it was like you wouldn't believe wow. how different they looked at the time. I mean, they looked like four guys that just walked in off the street and went up on the stage. You know, they yeah. they quite didn't quite have their Radiohead look to them yet <laughs> at that time. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So um, anyway, I, I just want to say again, welcome to uh, the members of Minnesota Public Radio who have joined us today for this current virtual session with Jade Bird. Um, there is a Q and A function at the bottom of your screen. And so if you have any questions that you want to contribute to anything that you're curious to know, uh, we'd love to have you ask some questions. In fact, I have a couple that have come in already. So, um, you know, feel free to submit something and, and I'll do my best to, to relay your question. Um, so, so Jade, uh, black star radio head, and then you, um, played another new song, called Houdini. Um, you know, as I was listening to you perform, um, you know, as I've listened and played your music on The Current, you know, Lottery and Aha uh-huh, and I Get No Joy and we're playing the new song Head Start, um, not that I'm interested in sort of neatly putting you into some kind of genre box, but <clears throat> it's not easy to really define your style and it's likely because there are a lot of you know, different things, a lot of elements that you're bringing in. Um, because, mm-hmm. you know, I just heard you play a Radiohead song and you're wearing a Sonic Youth t-shirt, if I can see it behind your guitar <laughs> there. And, yeah. um, you know, th- th- I suppose the the label again of Americana, I guess it could be a fair one because it does cover a lot of different kinds of music. And um, I guess, how, how do you sort of define what you do? What are your sort of... Ins- inspirational you know what genres do you love what do you pull from I think you know I pull for, from such like a rich background of music like I just I think you know the common thread is like songwriting I think songwriting is the most important thing for me to get across you know and and I think sometimes I almost think of Americana nowadays as a bit of a way to say like it's an album with songwriting you know what I mean yeah <laughs> so I think I don't know I think you know, with sometimes we put like electric guitar and stuff. Sometimes we just, I just play just me, but like the common thread is just kind of my story via what I've written, you know, and, and me writing that. That's the most important thing. But, you know, you are right. I think a lot of people do want to be like, so are you indie? Are you pop? Are you this? And I'm right, like, right. I just, you know, I, you know I, I feel like I can relate to probably like, you know, a bit of a Tori Amos, a bit of Alanis Morissette, because they weren't really boxed in either does that make sense I think a lot of women even Sheryl Crow 
I think a lot of them albums didn't have a sort of genre either. So I definitely relate to probably 90s women a lot, a, a lot, a lot, probably is mm-hmm. what I listen to as well. So, yeah. Yeah, well, and naming artists like Alanis Morissette and Sheryl Crow, and um, but this actually is kind of a perfect segue into a member question here. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, from Sarah, who asks, uh, "Who would you consider your biggest musical influence?" Um, and, and Sarah also commenting on the fact that your music pulls in from so many different sounds. Yeah, I mean, like I said to you, probably that. I mean. Other places that have really probably had an influence on on me. Um, like I said, Tori Amos sort of changed the game a lot for the piano because I learned classical piano and always felt quite boxed in. Am I missing anything that you, you, you've heard me? I've heard you. <laughs> um, I feel like there's just people staring me in the face that now nah, I've just forgotten. Well, there's, there's been a few big moments. The Elliot Smith moment was a really good one. I feel yeah. like that threw you a different way. You know, yeah. um, Sonic Youth, again, a, another big pull. Um, I'm probably getting more into alternative as I get a bit older. I think mm-hmm. when I was younger, I was really into like country blues, Americana. You know, that was my like thing. And now I'm getting a bit older, probably more of the alternative indie stuff is coming in. So that's probably the meeting of sounds that people are hearing, you know. Uh, but Elliot Smith, yeah, he's mm-hmm. huge for me. That's yeah. the game, massively. Uh, Jade, I'm curious, not so much of the artists that influenced you, but who in your life was like your music guru? Like, Mm. who was listening to the music that you would kind of pick up on um, or was like, hey, you have to hear this. You've got to hear this. Um, Because, I mean, I think for myself, I think, well, I listened to a lot of the music my parents were listening to. And my parents were teenagers, you know, in the mid to late 60s. Um, yeah. And then, you know, my friends in school, we, we kind of listened to the same era of music. But then as I got a little older and then I would like hang out with older friends or people that were from mm-hmm. out of town. And, you know, the, the people that really started saying, hey, you should listen to this or check this out. Or if you like this, you should listen to this. Well, when I was like, so my parents were into like, they were 90s because my mom had me at 20 years old. So she was Mm. always into probably the women that I just referenced. um, She's always like, I played you Tori Amos before you found her. I'm like, yeah, 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 okay, mom. (laughs) But I think think when I was like 13, my mom had a relationship um, with quite a toxic guy. But, you know, he actually influenced me in a big way with a lot of the music he introduced to me and he played the guitar. Um, And I think as a young mind in that situation, I found it very magical. And I think that's just probably the environment you're in when something is a bit toxic, you kind of, you're probably kind of wandering around going, what's this? But he introduced me to Johnny Cash, he introduced me to Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, Sun Mm -hmm. House, you know? So that was the first person. And then probably I hit 16, I hear about 1718 and my manager became a huge, huge influence um, into what I was listening to. Like I've got so like I've got so much to credit him for of things he's shown me, like be it Chris Isaac, be it Sonic Youth, you know, be it the Riot Girl phase, be it Kleenex. You know, he is just this library um, of music. And we used to go on the big car trips around the US, you know, doing every little um like city or state and he'd just play me music the whole way and I just absorb it so my manager I think I've got a lot to thank for that definitely which is kind of unusual I think yeah yeah. I um it's incredible how you know we think that you know we grow up with the music we like and then suddenly you meet someone new or you know you're able to spend time with you know someone like your manager and all of a sudden Mm -hmm the door opens the door. And for me, I was, when I was in college, I was doing college radio and that was really the first time that like a lot of indie music was yeah. introduced to me. In fact, I was on the air on college radio um, when we got the news that Elliot Smith passed away. And I just like a moment like that will always be stuck in my mind. And the people that I went to school with that were like in a broadcasting and like remembering, remembering the person who told who told me that Elliot Smith had died or like kind of the, the old school guy who had been doing the classic rock show for 25 years at the station, you know, that, but I, I just, uh, I, I like to hear where, where people kind of, um, 
I like to hear about the artists that influence you, but then also just the people that, you know, introduce us to our, that, our favorite that's music. That's an interesting question because I've never been asked that before. And I feel like people who live and breathe music, like, you know, as I really, really do, I think it, you have that because you live your life like and the soundtrack of your life is as important as your life it's the strangest thing and so I think you're so right there when you're when you're saying about the people because I mean it takes you right back you know right back to how you influence and right back to the impression that these people and this music had on you and it's I mean it's my favorite thing it's my favorite thing probably about life is having that um and that's probably why I do what I do but you know what I mean it's I, I think that's such an interesting question and conversation that you actually rarely have uh, considering its impact so yeah I like I like that question yeah I can thank my older sister for my 80s metal exposure uh, <laughs> she had epic hair in the 80s let me tell you it was pretty sweet um, but then again you know I'll hear a certain song and it makes me think of my sister and the fact that we shared a bedroom and like and and yep. just hearing it at like you know, volume 11. And I'm being glad that I, I felt like I had a cool older sister, you know what I mean? Like a tough older <laughs> sister. Um, well, you know what, Jade, uh, you know what, actually, um, I do have another question from a member that I, I want to pass on. Uh, cause this is great. Cause I was just watching this video the other night. Um, the video for, I get no joy. Mm -hmm. How fun was it to film that video? Because it looked interesting. Now, is that the one I just want to make sure that I, 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 yes, in the, in the firebird, I think yeah. it's a firebird. Um, what was it, what was it like doing that video? Chaos. So <laughs> we went into LA and we got the first hailstorms in LA since, I don't know, five years. It was just hammering it down mm. and it was wet and it was murky. And Honestly, the director just couldn't believe it. He just had head in hands like the whole time. I mean, I was having the best time of my life because I was just sort of getting to drive at five, but I can't actually drive. So I was, you know, I, I had people in the car with me filming my face and I was singing and driving, just really feeling myself. But I, I, I couldn't drive in a, in a normal scenario. <laughs> but yeah, it was fun. You know, the thing is like when you don't have like that much budget pumped into a video, it's pretty like... It's pretty kind of not DIY. That's the wrong word for it, but kind of chaotic. Like we did the my motto video the day before, I think it was. We did it two days on the bounce. So yeah, it was a lot of fun though, and you can kind of feel that in in the video. So yeah, it was good. So were were you doing your own stunt driving, or did somebody like was somebody doing like those burnouts and the? I didn't do the donuts. No, I didn't do the donuts. I wish I did the donuts, but uh, they wouldn't let me. <laughs> oh, that is funny. Um, well, you know what, uh, Jade, I think um, we're going to get another song from you. And, and before we do, um, I just want to say that I, I really appreciate you doing this session and especially for all the members that are tuned in right now. Um, you know, the current is public radio. And so, I mean, we talk about that Minneapolis St. Paul audience and people are really really supportive of this station and really supportive of the artists. Um, I think the cool thing about this station, and I've been here a long time and it's, it, it, I'm always blown away by the support, but, um, I'm always blown away by how many people show up to the concerts of the people they hear on the current. And that's kind of the cool circle that's going on with a station yeah, like I this. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I mean, First Avenue is primarily from the current audience. Like, there's no doubt about that. Like, mm -hmm. so... You know, I literally couldn't agree with you more. But yeah, I just, yeah, huge, not to get too mushy, but I'm a huge, I'm so thankful for like you guys' support and like having me on. And I mean, it's always our favorite place to pass through. So yeah, thank you so much for having us. Excellent. Yeah. Well, we look forward to the new year. Um, are you kind of like sometime in 2021 uh, for the record yeah. or you're still kind of figuring that part out? Yeah, no, I definitely release the record next year. I mean, it's finished. So if I didn't yeah. release it next year, I think I'd be bored of it by the next. Um, right. But yeah, more more probably like singles, but I feel like the singles are really encapsulating a whole different vibe, a whole different thing. So be a few singles and then the record next year. 
Excellent. Well, we look forward to it. Jade Bird. And also, Luke, thank you so much for, for joining thank today. So for having us. Yeah, it was really nice to meet the two of you. Uh, before we get to that last song, I do want to say thank you to a few people. Obviously, again, the members of Minnesota Public Radio, you make these sessions possible um, with your support. We're able to have the resources to um, bring you these connections with the artists that you hear on The Current. So thank you so much for that. Uh, and speaking of that, that support, Great technical support. Um, I, I work with some very talented people here at Minnesota Public Radio. I want to say thank you to Tom Campbell and Eric Stromstead and Peter Eklund, uh, producer Jesse Wiza today, and again, uh, Jade Bird. Uh, you hear her songs on The Current, and again, when you support The Current, you're supporting an artist like Jade Bird because you, it's not like everywhere on the dial that you hear Jade Bird in heavy rotation. So we're really proud to be that station that plays her music. Um, and this is one that you'll recognize as a current listener. Uh, it is called Uh Huh. And I thank you so much for joining today and you have a great weekend. Up in the bathroom and go to work and stay real late and take shoes, she'll be back soon. Then a best friend his fingers around a pretty blonde Latin dude. I bet you never thought about that, did you? It's a real business, and I don't want to get involved. You really get the cheese, please. I think you should be tough. She got you on your knees like you. So you don't ask her if you can check her phone Talk about the guys at work So you feel egocentral Like fancy cars and football teams She like continental With a European accent Does she speak? Oh, so gentle And it's none of my business And I don't want to get If you think that she's good I know, I know She got you on your knees Like a little boy Everybody sees her The wash of the work, she's doing what you did to me. She gave you where it is, but you don't seem to see. The wash of the work, she's doing what you did to me. She got you in your eyes like a little boy.